So our next speaker is Oluwambumi Anani. And I love our next speaker who is an educator like myself. Anani is an educator from Cor Con Cor eh? Con Concordia. Wow, this is a tongue twister for me. Concordia College Yola, where she teaches English language and literature. Besides teaching in classroom, she reaches out to students and teachers in other schools through a budding initiative, the Initiative for Educational Transformation, IET. Oluwabumi is passion, passion is to build students to become self-reliant and creative. Our mission is to create a platform for both students and educators to grow, collaborate, create, and enjoy the learning and teaching experiences. As a national winner of Maltina Teacher of the Year Award 2020, Oluwabuma, Oluwabumi Anan, Anani hopes to make an incredible impact on education landscape. Anani, this is very interesting. As an educator, sometimes you can take like um, education not very, very serious in terms of thinking people are not benefiting, people are not changing. But education, and if I remember very well from Mandela, education, he said, it is one thing that transforms life, trans transforms people and what we expect from future of the people. You have taken a line of education and you want to use that to transform the lives of people. I want to ask you, did you have an interest in education or being a teacher when you were young? Like what drove you to be a teacher? There's so um, much noise in my background, so I'll be putting off because we are in, in political campaign season in my country. So, okay. I'll just, yeah, so I'll just put it off so that you don't hear. Okay. Um, a very good afternoon from my end to everyone, particularly, I mean, to everyone on this um, forum, this networking forum. Um, I must um, join my voice with so much Peter, who has recommended this initiative. Um, thank you so much, Winnie, for giving us this opportunity to this platform for us to have our voices heard to share our stories. Now to the question you, you asked me. Um, I've always had an interest, in fact, naturally, I got into the teaching profession naturally. I just glided into it. There was no push, there was no motivation, I'm missing the force and anywhere. It was just a natural for me. How did it begin? I have the first child in my family, the first child and the first girl. Um, and um, my mother, when she had all, when she had me, and um, she was my, she was a stay-at-home mom, she had time for myself, my younger brother. But as time progressed, she needed to work outside the home because responsibilities mounted, demands grew. And so she couldn't just leave the entire responsibility to our father. And now I have to step into our shoes. She taught me, she was our teacher at home, so I had to start teaching um my younger ones my siblings so naturally i took after her she would work outside of the home i would stay back at home after school and i would uh, mentor my um, my siblings so uh, that was how i grew into the role of a teacher at home then after graduating from secondary school um i was awaiting admission into the university then there was this neighbor of ours who lived in the neighborhood at the time he came to the house and um, saw me, I mean, he was surprised. What are you doing at home? I said, well, since I'm waiting for admission, I'm just at home, I assist my parents and then run one or two errands. And that's just it. He was disappointed. I said, no, you have potential. I know you, I have a school. Even though I only employ graduates, but I know there is something you can do. We can't just allow your potential to lie dormant like that. And that was how this man, you know, gave me the opportunity. I started teaching kindergarten class. And from there, um, I began to discover my passion for teaching. And teaching has been my first love. It's something I love doing. 
Because when I see the change, the impact I make on the children, when I see their smiles, when I see a child who wasn't able to perform a particular task, now able to do it, it gives a lot of joy to me. I feel fulfilled. And I felt deep within me a conviction that this is my path, that this is what I'm called to do, to make an impact in the lives of children, particularly the less performing children that other people have given up, up on. You know, people, people find them difficult to teach. And when I'm able to teach them, when I'm able to connect with them, and they begin to blossom, it gives me a lot of encouragement. And that was the the signal for me that teaching is it. So here I am today as a teacher. <laughs> so, so interesting that being the first style, your first teaching practice was at home. <laughs> and then you went yes. to go to teach in the kindergarten. I think life has a way of directing you into the path you're supposed to be. And because it directed you and you enjoyed it. And I guess that is why you find that you are very passionate about it. And that gives you the results, the satisfaction when you see the transformation in people's lives. Because that is what tells you you are on the right, right path. There's something you wanted to share with us on a video, is it? Oh, yes. And there's, and there's something that you also wanted to share with us. Yes. Oh. Because I'm sure there is a lot that you are doing on the ground. This thing, I think it's greater than you imagine, I would think. And what you've been doing must be something that has brought a lot of feedback for you to feel the satisfaction of having made the choice to be a teacher. Is it possible for us to go ahead and share that? Oh, well, um, it depends on you because I was. I, okay, um, I was thinking that there would be opportunity for us to share the slides, but again, you could we could go by your plan. If you could share the slide, fine. But I think the other video too, we could also, because there is something, there is a message for every one of us there. If it's possible for us to share the slides, no problem. And if it is going to be routine questioning as um, has been done with other speakers, I'm open to any of the options. <laughs> I think there's something you wanted because I saw it very late. I didn't get enough time to watch that. Maybe let me just have the slides okay. and then we can see from there what it is that you wanted to share with us so that okay. we can learn. You never know when the opportunity to learn is there. I That's always true. say, take the opportunity and make sure that you can learn. Let me just bring it up and you can, you can take us through that. Right. I think I'll get somebody to help me with the slideshows. Can you see this, this, the slides? Yes, okay. You can see them? Yeah, it's visible. Ah, it's visible. Yes, it is. Okay. I think that's uh, the first slide. Okay. <laughs> All it's right. Short, so you can go ahead. Thank you very much, Winnie, for this opportunity granted me to share um, um, the little I have <laughs> with everyone here. So now, definitely, um, our previous speakers have shed a lot of light. They have shared a lot of their experiences. For instance, our legal speaker, she opened her eyes to the fact that there is need for women representation at all levels. And of course, we also heard from Summer, there is need for us to they believe in our self-worth, especially when it comes to financial empowerment, because there cannot be a financial empowerment if we don't put ourselves out there. Women need to have self-worth, women need to believe in themselves, and that is the only time they'll be able to put themselves out there in order for them to take 
take advantage of the vast opportunities that are available both at the national level and even international levels. And so I'd like to lend my voice on this note to say that, okay, we'll be talking about women empowerment, women empowerment, but at the grassroots level, before a woman can get empowered, before a woman can have a voice, before a woman will be in the position to make decisions that will all go well for herself, for her future, and for posterity, there is need for us to start with the girl, the girl, the girl child. If the girl child does not have um, it all together. She cannot grow up to becoming a woman that is confident. She will not grow up to knowing her self-worth. And it becomes a vicious cycle over and over again. I will end up telling the same stories and becoming limited even years from now. So my focus this afternoon is to focus on the girl child. And I tag my talk this afternoon, reach out, take action. So at the end of this talk, what do we have to go? I mean, learn from one another. We should have our own personal working definition of the terms empowerment and women empowerment. What does empowerment mean to you? Beyond the textbook definition, beyond what everybody at the international community has defined empowerment to be, the ability, I, I mean, empowerment can mean power to you. Empowerment can mean independence for you. Empowerment can mean self-worth for you. It can mean anything. So at the end of the day, after listening to the different speakers, what is your personal working definition of empowerment? empowerment for the woman and for you as a particular woman. Now, the second objective at the end of the day is to appreciate. There is need for us to enjoy. There is need for us to look at the milestones we have achieved in the area of women empowerment. It is true that compared to the vast population of women we have all over the world, we do not have I mean, a commensurate representation of this vast population of women in our on, on our boards, you know, representing us in the, in the list legal sector, in the political sector, financial, economic, and even educational sector. But then we still need to appreciate the little that we have achieved over the years through the efforts of feminists, of women, of activists who have been at the forefront talking, conversing, campaigning for the need for more female representation. And so, apart from appreciating the milestones achieved so far, there is need for us to still recognize our current realities. Our legal speaker has already recognized those current realities that we are not doing enough, in as much as we have some women representing us, you know, like, um, like Usama. Usam she is ably representing us in the financial sector, empowering other women, believing in them, contributing a quota to ensuring that the female voice is heard and they are able represented, especially in the financial sector, which is key to empowerment in today's recurrent realities. So there is need for us to recognize what is left undone and what is our own personal responsibilities to ensuring that the gap is breached. Now, in recognizing these current realities, there is an actionable step we need to take. What step are we taking on the social skill? What step are we taking on the mutual skill? And what steps are we taking on a personal skill towards ensuring the attainment of the sustainable development goal five, which is gender equality? And of course, you know, gender equality can be achieved only only primarily on the wings of SDG4, which is quality education. Unless the girl child acquires education, we cannot hope to achieve gender equality in 10 years time. Now visualize and relate to the impact as well as the significance of female empowerment. And of course, we need to contribute to the ongoing discourse. The next slide, please. We need next slide, next slide please. Okay, now, in the beginning, remember we said that there is need for us to do an appraisal of where we are coming from. So together, we are going to look at where are we coming from. We are women today. We are adults today. We have a history. Now, there is need for us to look back and look at an, as, do an assessment of our historical past so that we can be able to make a fundamental relation differential between our past and the present. The patriarchal structure. We found ourselves in the patriarchal structure. It doesn't matter what country we are in, the society has been structured, has been rooted, has been formed upon the patriarchal structure, whereby the woman, the, the feminine voice has been stilled, has been stifled over the years. Now, you see a girl child, 
Of course, we grew up knowing all of this. A girl child in a family, there is the paucity of fund, the fund question. First of all, we are faced with different constraints as females. We look at the culture we are coming from, whereby the girl child is on the scene, but is not permitted to be heard. The girl child is, 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 is seen as somebody who has no feeling and so does not even have a voice or does not even have anything to say. That is where we are coming from. Now the fun question. A lot of girls, a lot of families in Africa, they do not have the financial wherewithal. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, the, the problem of poverty has always been there and it has not changed. Not much has changed today. We grew up in environments where there was paucity of funds. And so there was always a question of a choice. Should we send a girl child to school or should we send our male children to school? But oftentimes, oftentimes we find a situation by parents make a decision decision to sponsor their male children to school and leave the girl child at home to face a disproportionate treatment, a load of house chores at home, a load of, I mean, family responsibilities at home, and this and child care as well. And these are unpaid work. The girl child is forced, is forced, is marginalized, is discriminated against even at the home front. Now, facing all of these threats, there is a threat of early and forced life except for the few of us who were able to overcome all of these constraints, all of those barriers, all of these discriminatory practices. And we have come to, and we have become who we are today, a vast majority of the girls we grew up with, they couldn't overcome all of these barriers and they couldn't attain their potential. And so some of them were forced into early marriages and marriages were not even ready for. And then this becomes a vicious circle. They get married early, they do not have the financial empowerment, they do not have the financial skills. No, but like what the summer said, the rural women, they cannot afford loans because the financial institutions, they will need a bank statement. They want to know your financial income. And when you do not have a financial income that can put you in a position to access loan, then the poverty cycle remains the same. Nothing changes, rather it gets worse. And so the next generation continues with that vicious cycle. And today we have more of the poverty rate. So what do we do? How do we get out of this rut? Here we are. In the midst of the obstacles, yes, we have triumphed, but <laughs> do we hang our boots and stop there? No. And this is at the basis of our ongoing discourse. In some countries, statistics shows that domestic violence has increased by 30%. 496 million illiterate women still exist all around the world. 41,000 girls under the age of 18 are forcibly married off and early. Women any 34% less than men for equal work that they do. $10 trillion worth of unpaid work, etc. This is the current reality. How do we move from here to ensure that these statistics is reduced to the barest minimum, particularly with regards to sustainable development goals that by 2030, we should have achieved gender equality for all, where both fe the female gender and the male gender, we have access to equal opportunities, equal resources, and a better life for everyone. Now, this empowerment we're talking about, this ability, this power, this independence that we want every woman to enjoy, it begins with the individual. It begins with me. It begins with you. It is a call to personal action. Any one of us listening right now is a personal action. First of all, we have already portrayed the need for personal development and growth. And that is why we are here. That is why Winnie has organized this forum for women because they say iron sharpened iron. By listening to Winnie, by listening to Usama, by listening to our legal speaker, and we've been sharpened up, we've been pushed up, we are braced up to become better versions of ourselves. And this is where empowerment begins. Empowerment is a process, it's an inside out product. It is not something that stops because we have acquired a milestone. We keep at it until we become the best version of ourselves. Then personal assertiveness. There is need. Um, I, when I was listening to Usama, she said that when she was on the marketing team, she needed to develop her aggressiveness, the ability to be aggressive. Because if you're not aggressive, you will not be able to win clients to your side to invest in your financial institution. So there is need in our personal life, there is need for us to be assertive about what we want. When we know what we want, when we are able to make choices 
for about what we want and what we do not want, what we can tolerate, what we can accept, and what we will not tolerate. That is the beginning of personal assertiveness, and that is a roadmap to empowerment. Then personal discipline. We cannot achieve financial um, emancipation. We cannot achieve representativeness in the, of, in the social structures of our national and international life without personal discipline. There is need for us to have discipline over our finances, discipline over our emotion, discipline in the way we go about achieving our goals. Otherwise, the goals that we have set out to achieve, primarily the one of the goals I see here is for more women, more women to be represented in the in educational sector, in the legal sector, in the political fabric of our countries and the international fabric as well. This is a goal. And without personal development on our part, without personal assertiveness on our part, without personal discipline, there is not much we'll be able to achieve in the area of those goals to ensure that, uh, that, that gender parity is achieved at the end of the day. Then without personal greed, what is greed? Greed is the ability to do one thing over and over again until you are a master over it, until you are passionate about it, until you are committed to it, and until you develop a personal love for it. So what's achieving a, a particular goal? We want women empowerment. We, we don't just want empowerment for ourselves. We want empowerment for the girl child out there, for the child who teach in the classroom, for the child in that rural area who doesn't even know, have a clue about what our future would look like. They, they, this world depend on us. When we succeed, it will be easier for us to help them succeed. When we are happy, it's easier for us to make other people happy. So it is our personal responsibility that look, if that girl in the village who is suffering under the patriarchal structure in the 21st century, if that girl in the classroom cannot have a voice or it does not even have a hope of furthering our education beyond primary school, these children's hope, their dreams, lies on me if I'm able to succeed, if I'm able to drive myself towards success, then it will be easy for me to reach out to those ones. It will be easy for me to be a voice to the voiceless. If Osama had not risen, had not listened to her mother, she wouldn't have been in the position where she is today. And if she had not been in the position where she is today, she wouldn't be in the position to assist other women. She has women on her team. She's motivating them. She's a mentor to them. She's been a mentor because she has been able to drive herself. She's been able to listen to her mother, she motivated herself through personal development, growth, personal assertiveness, personal discipline and grit, she has been able to occupy a position where she'll be able to help other women. So at the end of it all, it depends on me, it depends on you, because we have been able to rise by date of hard work, by date of goal setting and, uh, and assertiveness, determination, we have risen to this height when we hope to move to greater heights because the higher we move, the better it is and easier for us to be able to raise other girls, raise other women to be the best fashions of themselves. Next slide, please. Now, we have talked about empowerment begins with me. Now, it continues with me because empowerment is a process. It does not end. Now, if it continues with me, what am I expected to do? I am expected not just to sit back and enjoy my achievements, not just to sit back and rule over others. Like our legal speaker said, that it is not about power over others. It is power with others. The we, not just me. It begins with me, but it doesn't end with me. I have to join hands with other women. I have to reach out, I have to take action. And how do we take action as women? There is need for us to adjust gender roles. As women in our homes, there is need for us to change the status quo. It is already in our culture that, oh, boys do this, girls do this. Oh, boys can are permitted to come home late. But girls, no, 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 you have to come home around three, you have to cook. No, there is need for us right now. Since we want to empower other girls, we want to change the story. We want to change the trajectory for the feminine folk all over the world, then it is our responsibility to change what that culture means. The fact that it's a culture, the fact that it's a tradition does not mean it must continue. There is need for us to put a stop to whatever is not in the best interest of the female folk. So from export, we begin to tell our boys, we need to tell our girls, whatever is meat for the geese is meat for the gander as well. So whatever a girl is allowed to do or is allowed from doing, like coming home late, like smoking, if we don't want our boys to come home late, the girls still should not come home late. And we should 
just be fair in the way we assign roles in the home front so that everyone will not have no one will have a sense of um of, of um a domineering sense over the other gender so as it begins with us we need to pass the touch across it shouldn't just end on i mean with us talking about it on our social media handles um in the bedroom in our conferences like this but actionable steps must be taken right from our homes to wash away that mentality that this, this is a role for girls, this is a role for boys. Everyone is equal. If equality is our goal, there is need for us to begin to implement such mentality right from our homes and in the classrooms. Then support for other women. We need to support our girls. Let me start with the girl child. In the classroom, the girl's boys should not be stifled. Give them opportunities to self-express. Give them opportunities to harness their potential. Let them hold on the stage. Let their voices be heard. If there is a task for boys, people know that it's for boys. Oh, boys are always in the jet club. Why don't you encourage the girls to believe that they can also do engineering as well? Let them, let them outgrow that limiting mentality that, oh, this task is for boys. It is a boy that can climb the wall. It is a boy that can fix the fan. Let us give them the opportunity to try it out and gain confidence over time. Support other women as well. There are rural women out there. There are women living with domestic violence that do not even know who they can talk with. There are women who don't have the financial well with them. There are women who have no skill at all. There are women who don't have information about child marriage and its dangers. They know it in theory that this is not good for them, but they don't know the real implications of this. And yes, there are so many individuals, not non-governmental organizations who are doing a lot of work, but the work they are doing is not enough. We need more people to go to the villages. We need more people to be bold enough to talk to these families and let them know that, what, that, that they are needed in the society. And apart from that, please, um, now the expected outcome. Apart from supporting other women, there is need for us to start initiatives as well. Start initiatives. If you cannot start an initiative, support one. There are so many initiatives out there that are, that are doing the work. They are walking the talk, but most of them do not have the funding. Can you just assist them? especially when they are focused on empowering, empowering the female child, go to schools, talk to the girls, sponsor a child through school, assist a family to, uh, to enable their children acquire skills, especially the female gender. And what is the expected outcome? Digital empowerment. By the time we are able to galvanize, mobilize action towards the direction of meaningful, impactful, actionable, not just talk, but actionable, female empowerment programs it will lead to digital empowerment because if our girls are left out digitally if they do not have the means the education the information the literacy and the skills that will enable them to have digital empowerment the use of technology to drive their businesses to empower themselves very soon the rate of unemployment as far as the female gender is concerned will be at an all-time high the men will take all the jobs because jobs today are increasingly being automated so when we empower the girl child when we empower the female there is digital empowerment cultural empowerment cultural empowerment whereby we will now erase all the all the biases all the bias in the culture of, of, of our traditions and then educational empowerment. Educate a woman, educate a child. You have educated a nation and you have freed, emancipated a nation from ignorance and from financial incapacitation. Next slide, please. And this brings us to a video I would have loved us to watch. So, because this video actually graphically illustrates all we have been trying to say. There is need for us to go to the grassroots. It shouldn't end with women, but it should start with a girl child. It started with an idea, a simple act in response to a call for help. It started by listening because everyone has a voice because we all deserve dignity because people are willing and capable 
empowerment requires much more than a single transaction or temporary assistance. An opportunity to flourish does not start with a handout. It starts with a job. Work provides worth. Education breeds innovation. Mentorship nourishes relationship. It's about investing in the whole person because people are worth it. Because everyone has a dream for their future. What would the world look like if we viewed the success of others as our own? What if you could equip someone to not just survive, but thrive? What if you could play a role in this process? What if you could know who made your product? And what if their life would never be the same because of it? This is empowerment. Wow, that is nice. Let me just... That was really nice. Thank you. That was really nice. I need to go back to the slides. Oh, no, no. So we can move on. Yeah. So I've, made, I've taken some notes there, a lot of uh, learning in terms of what you discussed and the statistics that you have given us, which I think we take for granted. We assume that because we have had an opportunity, others have had. It is not, it is not true. So we can see from the statistics there is that once we get there, we need also to have lend others the hand so that they can also come along and so that we can continue to grow and reduce the gap between the people who are aware are growing, the people who are moving forward to the ones who we have assumed that they should have reached where we have reached. That was very insightful. I've also noted the few things that you mentioned about development and growth. And I think one of the things that as an educator, even though for me, it's not something that I, I really wanted to do when I was young, it's so interesting, but I love now being an educator because like you said, when you see the transformation, it really brings a lot of joy. And it really helps you to see that you can assume that because you have been empowered, others have, they are lacking on that opportunity. And you can step in and make the difference to move somebody from one place to another. Okay. You also talked about the assertiveness discipline. And I think one of the things that we don't have is that discipline, even to say to ourselves, I actually want to grow myself. And because we are socialized to see that the family comes first, everybody else comes first, I don't need to come first. We need to change a bit of our, of our mindset towards saying that if I have come first, I'll be able to help the others because I have seen the difference that it makes when, when I am there because I'll be a better mom, I'll be a better wife, I'll be a better employee. But if I assume that, let me let the others go. How will they actually even grow when you are not growing? If you are a mother, like you said, there's the vicious circle that just keep coming back. You get your child, you're 13 years old. You have no exposure towards like, you could wait and get married later and still 
bring up your children in a way that they appreciate you as a mom. So you've really brought a lot of things up. I don't know if there are any questions, but I have learned so much from that. <laughs> yeah, Thank I can you. see somebody saying, wow, we need to collaborate as women, very vital. I can't see what is the name from there. Yeah, I had that was really lovely. Okay. I think the contacts have been provided there. So please, if you have uh, any questions or you want to reach out to Anan, then you can do that. But those are the things that for me I've picked. And I find that this is very interesting as most teachers are mothers. Why? <laughs> most teachers <laughs> are mothers. Why? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Now, the truth that you're right, most teachers are mothers because initially society believes that um, the easiest profession for the feminine gender is teaching. Mm -hmm. So they dump it on women that, mm -hmm. oh, you cannot be a, you, can, you cannot be a banker, you cannot be an engineer, you cannot be a medical doctor, would you have time for your family? So there is <laughs> this uh, mentality, there is this orientation that society has advanced over time, yeah. that the simplest, the most flexible profession that a woman can just fit into in such a way that it doesn't affect a commitment to a family is a teaching profession. <laughs> so however, in those in this times, that's the yeah. that is changing. Teachers who yeah. are females are beginning to have a lot of demands in the school front. And the reason being that a lot of homes have transferred their responsibility to the teacher in the classroom. Yeah. So in, yeah. it was in the past that teaching was that flexible. But now mm -hmm. a teacher in the classroom is a parent, a full-time parent, is an educator, a lot of things rolled in one. Yeah. But again, teaching for the woman is also something that I think should be encouraged. Because a woman, a teacher, is somebody who should be empathetic. A teacher is somebody who should be kind, you know, kind and proactive. It is only a woman that actually has that natural um, ability That's to great. empathize yeah. with the children. So when we have yeah. more women in the, teaching, in the teaching profession, I think it will go well for society. Because as a female, we are own builders. And if we have yeah. direct um, contact with the children yeah. it would also help us be more impactful remember we're even talking about women empowerment so women directly empowering get the girl child what better yeah. profession is there for a woman than teaching <laughs> that is so true because they even say like um, mothers are more patient maybe yes. as a teacher you need a lot of patience so lot. that and nurturing <laughs> because you can nurture yes. without that patients like understand this person is not at the same level as I am, give them the opportunity to grow to reach where I am. Maybe that exactly. is what gives and makes it like teachers yes. with mothers. And maybe because we start at an early age when we are raising children, we've got to teach them to hold their spoon. We've got to yes. teach them to walk. And as we teach them, we learn a lot of patience. And maybe that exactly. is what has helped us to be considered as the best people to be teachers. But that exactly. doesn't dismiss, uh, like doesn't say that we can't play role in, we can't be put in any other role. The skills exactly. we have as mothers or as teachers can still take us elsewhere. Because yes. if we are in the workplace, I believe you need to be able to teach the people working around or people you're working with skills yes. they need in certain things that you are good at and exactly. that is where you need a lot of patience because teaching is a, a bit about patience because you can't just assume that today you know this you also didn't learn it in a day you need some time to learn to learn that that's yes. really really nice and very informational you Thank are you. a winner a national winner of Maltina teacher of the year award in 2020 tell us about that what was that? Oh, thank you very much, Rini. The National Mountain Teacher of the Year is an award that started in the year 2006. Yes. And it's an award that's, um, that has been sponsored 
understood by the Nigerian Bureau's PLC, they came together and looked at it that the most overlooked and underpaid, underrecognized profession in Nigeria, and indeed in for most countries in the world, is teaching. And so out of an array of different professions, they decided to focus attention on the teachers. And so every year, they organize competitions whereby they, 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 they try to recognize teachers who are going above and beyond their, their, their responsibilities in the classroom, doing much more. And they mm -hmm. investigate it, they ask certain questions, they have a panel of judges that look into the credentials and look at um, the impact the teacher has been making over the years in the teaching space. And by the time they investigate it, they go through the teacher's entries, they go to the teacher's evidence, Evidences, they go through the, the, the they investigate the the credibility of the claims that have been put forward by the teacher. The um the panel, which is headed by Professor Patrick Tommy, you know, um, he's a renowned professor in Nigeria. And then the team of judges come together, who themselves are educators. This is a competition recognized by the federal government of Nigeria, recognized by the National Union of Teachers, by the licensing body of, for educators, that is the TRCN, the Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria. So the award is recognized at every level and by every organization that is associated with educational system in Nigeria. So, and at the end of the competition every year, the organization um, gives a financial award of 6.5 million naira to the national winner, whoever emerges as a national winner. And um, I've been able, I, I was opportune to, to have the privilege of, his, of emerging national winner for 2020 award. And apart from the 6.5 million naira that is um, cash prize that is given to the emerging winner for that year, the organization also builds a block of classrooms for the school where the teacher is working. It's either if they have enough classrooms, they could build a, a, a library stacked with books, or they could, like my school, benefited from this um, award because a, a hall, a 500 capacity hall, was built for my school. Because before now, my school has been in existence for over 20 something years, but um, but we didn't have. Uh, a facility for our co-curricular activities. So most of the time when we are organizing graduation ceremonies, we have to uh, we have to fix it during the um, during the dry season. But with this award, the organization came and they built us a 500 seater capacity hall which we are using and enjoying and apart from that it gives exposure to the teacher we are able to network with other educators beyond Nigeria and we are able to develop our our capacity as teachers bring the innovative methodology into the classroom to sharpen our colleagues and to extend such knowledge to other teachers beyond the walls of our school this would enable us to do what we've been doing reaching out to other teachers reaching out to students so that the the touch will be passed on and then we have more reverberated effect and impact in the educational space. Wow, wow, well done. Even though I'm just wondering when I'm reading the profile, you say you <laughs> want to make an impact. You're already making an impact. That is <laughs> Thank <great>. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is great because you brought something to the school and the, you brought even more because then the school benefited from the work that you are doing, meaning that you're already having the impact that you have had and it's going out and because maybe now we are connecting and i saw in the group we have some educators we have even people we have some of the women coming from uh, institutions of higher learning maybe you'll be able to connect with them and there's nothing as good as learning from other people yes. you find that you you are lacking in one area and because of interacting with them you get more knowledge, more skills, more tools, more opportunities out there. And that is why it is so good, like when you meet, so that that time when people are meeting, they get to learn about others. And for me, I said, if we can make every of the, the inspiring women that we featured, if we can have them speak, people will get to know about you and you never know who will be looking for you on how they will connect with you and maybe something else will happen. We know that opportunities are there, but sometimes we are in spaces where we are not aware, but exposure does give people that uh, opportunity. I don't know if there are any other questions, comments, 
for Anane. This is very nice. This is interesting. And we want to congratulate you for the award and also encourage and say that um, what you have done, you have not done it like for your school, for yourself. You have impacted on people like us who didn't know about what you are doing. It's something very, very nice. Thank are you. there comments, questions? I don't know if the other speaker is in the house. Questions, comments for Anani? Are you learning? Are you getting inspired? Are you challenged? The whole idea is to inspire, challenge you so that you get out. Because if you don't get all these people speaking to you, then you'll never know that you're inspired or you're challenged. You never make the decision to move out of where you are to realize actually you are in a status quo. Questions, comments? Questions, comments? Questions, comments? Questions, comments? So what would you tell the younger Anani if now you were to meet her? What would you tell her, given the fact that you have been having the exposure, the experience, what you've gone through? If you met your younger self, what would you tell them? And before you say anything, I've missed out on some words. I'm not seeing people, they are active. I don't know whether they are sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants my t-shirt. I have my t-shirt here. Can you see my t-shirts? Yes. See myself. Beautiful. You can see. Nobody wants my t-shirt. So my second <laughs> one. <laughs> Sorry. <Eda. laughs> yeah, because we've had a lot. We've listened. We've learned. Did we learn anything anyway? So I'm just hoping that we have learned something. So question, comment? Yeah, we are inspired and challenged at the same time. Okay, so any more comments? Any more comments? Do we have the next speaker before I release Anani? Can't see her online. I don't know whether she's there. But I've learned a lot of things. I'm grateful. I can see that we are not where we started. And we are making some good progress in terms of opening our minds, freeing ourselves from the limitations we could have been having, seeing the possibilities and imagining what is possible. And today's session has got really a lot of information that leaves us saying to ourselves, are we asking enough questions? Because unless we can ask ourselves the questions, we can remain where we are. So we need to be able to ask our questions and ask ourselves those necessary questions. I can't see the other speaker. Anybody with a question anyway? I said you are going to give us um, <laughs> yes, ma'am. some some advice, if you were to meet your younger self, what would you tell her? If I were to meet Bumi and Nani, younger girl, years old. <laughs> oh, 20 years old. <laughs> 20 years old, I will tell the younger version of Bumi and Nani, never ever take no for an answer. Don't ever, that's what I would tell, don't ever, Take no for an answer. In so far, you believe in that dream. Go all out, no matter how many times somebody tells you no, take yourself off again and keep running, keep moving, you will get it. Then secondly, I will tell the younger version of Bumi that be teachable. For you to get there, there are people who want to reach out to you. Allow them, hold your hand in theirs. So they can walk you down the path. You can rest, you can stand on your shoulders, but you cannot stand on your shoulders if you do not listen to them, if you are not teachable. So being teachable, never taking no for an answer, these are two things I will keep telling the younger version of Bumi. And of course, I'll tell the younger version of Bumi never to stop trusting God because with God, then with people, that is by being teachable, 
and then taking no for an answer, which is great. I believe the sky is just a starting point for the younger version of Bumi and Nani. Yeah, I like the first one. You said no. No can also mean new opportunities. Hmm, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take a look at that. <laughs> yeah. So don't, don't get discouraged because you got a no and you saw from the previous speakers that a lot of times, and I think that is the part where we are socialized to accept that, we need to change that and we need to start seeing things differently so that we look at it and ask ourselves why it should be this way. We need to ask that so that we can change that frame and we can say to ourselves, no means new opportunity. Then we need to reach out. If you don't know, you don't know, accept you don't know, accept you need somebody to help you reach where you want. I think that's the biggest challenge sometimes we can have. And that is the, I think, I don't know if, I can remember when you mentioned about growth, that is maybe one of the hindrances that we have towards growth. When we don't want to ask somebody, please help me, I don't know. But we need to know that there are other people who are steps ahead of us. We need to go to them and ask them so that we can, we can be able to reach our goals. The last one you said, never stop trusting God. True, because God is always there to assist us at the time when we think that God is not there, God is ever there waiting for us and waiting on us so that we can say, I need that helping hand and please trust the process because God will make it work for you. So interesting, very, very interesting. I love, I love all that. I love all that summary. You know, I also take notes, you see, my speech is full of notes. Wow. I take note for each speaker because you have to learn. You have to learn. There's so much to learn from everybody. And when you are learning, you are growing. There is, there is always growth from every person you meet. So if you go to meet that person with an open mind, that is a growth mind, you will pick, even if it's just one thing that will change your life. Sometimes we just need one thing for our life to change. Our first speaker, when I met her, I just needed one thing. And that was to be able to meet these women who are in those positions to understand because my question and the thing that was really bothering me and that has always made me want to understand why women don't take themselves out there to the position was what are these women in those positions doing and what is why is there a gap between them and us if that is us and why am i afraid you know those those questions yes, and it's yes, yes. very very interesting and she was one person who was always ever there you will hear when there are uh, forums when they push for women come stand do show because our greatest fear is to be seen our greatest fear is for people to judge us and I say that from the day you are born, you are judged to the day you, the day you die is when they stop judging you. So whether or not you like, whether you are quiet, you'll be judged. And that is the one thing that as women, maybe that is what keeps us, keeps us uh, back or holds us back because we don't want to speak out and then be reminded, you said this and it was wrong. Of course, you'll make mistakes. You can't say that you're going to be perfect. You'll make, make mistakes because you are, you are human. So thank you so much. There's so much Sweet. learning. So much learning. I'm a Briton. A lot of notes, a lot of things. <laughs> I've learned today a lot of stuff like, oof. OK, so this is it, what it is called. You have to interact with people and get to learn.